Hello, and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi. Back and better than ever with new hair and oh, new... No. Just ignore What is with these new bracelets? You're like one of those young gays that's like doing like yoga. This. Like, what's going on here? They were, they were, I don't know. They were like gifts, like in a gift bag. And I was like, I don't know. Do I wear these now? I don't know. Jonathan. It's a whole thing. <laughs> So I feel like there's a certain time in your life, like when you go to like someone's like first wealthy apartment and, you know, when someone has like a harp and like this, like a throw thing that looks like a boa, like yeah. that was Jonathan's, I'm a metropolitan opera performer apartment yeah. that he had, you know, near Lincoln Center. And now we have this going on. I don't know. You got to keep up with the times, right? <laughs> this is like post-divorce. I'm new and I'm ready to mingle, Jonathan. Like, yeah, this exactly. Is... Am I ready to mingle or do I just want to go at home and read a book? <laughs> and watch some show skating on YouTube. <laughs> I hope you that's should. not what you're doing. But, you know, for a Sunday morning, it's fine. But anyway. Okay. Great okay. Jonathan, you did. So there was some news right after I posted the video last week, Megan Duhamel filled in for you. Hi, Megan. It was wonderful. She had some interesting insight. Megan had a lot to say. You yeah. don't. You don't say. You know. Yeah. Funny that. Um, yeah. And um, she's so serious, but we know she has like a, a darling sense of humor and personality too. But she was very serious on the show. Well, it was a little snarkier afterwards. She and. Uh, as, as we have learned, tends to be the theme yes. when a guest comes on, which is kind of my favorite thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Remember Linda Frediani being like, cut this next part, but here's what really happened. <laughs> you know, that was an editing journey. You know, yeah, I, I actually, cannot. you know, that part two, part of the reason it was so long delayed is because she had said that so many times. In my mind, right. I thought it was going to be so much harder than it was. It was... Uh... <laughs> As if you had a team of 300 digital editors. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Oh, man. Oh, um, man. So, uh, Daisuke Takahashi uh, announced a comeback. Jonathan, how do we feel about this? I was not as excited as everyone was immediately because I'm going to say why, and it has nothing to do with Daisuke, and it took me a long time to internalize it. So, I oh. remember Daisuke being, like, really injured. Like, I felt like we had to fake him making the 2014 team. Obviously, I would have sent him because I wanted to see him there. I just wanted to see him skate. Even if he just did crossovers in a warm-up, I was there like, for it. I didn't want to wa have to watch Mura at the Olympics at that no. point in time. You know, Correct. And apparently neither did the Japanese Federation. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, we've had to fake a lot of comebacks lately. Like, I've been... Like, have you ever faked it with a man, Jonathan? <laughs> right so you know it feels like the polite thing to do right so there have been some comebacks lately and like we've just I've not said much because I'm like like people were just exploding over the fact of that Gracie Gold got a cup of Russia assignment the same week that she was at a show where she was the MC instead right. of a skater and, you know, we, we've talked about this on the show a little bit. There's a there's a quick turnaround in skating. The skating PR machine wants everyone to learn from their mistakes and have changed and they're grown and they're different now. And they're talking like 10 minutes after a dismal performance. Or like when we were talking about Jason's, like, I had a lot of time to think after not making the Olympic team. And I was like, this isn't about Jason, but I was like, logistically, no, you haven't. So I don't think a 12-step program, like, happens and, like... I think so many people try to rush all this emotional and internal growth, Gracie included. Yeah. Why Did we mention Gracie yet? Yeah, no, we yeah. didn't. Yeah, I'm just been in general. There's been a lot of, like, changes overnight that are just things going to be magically yeah. better in skating. And, you know, it's... Gracie went through a journey that <clears throat> takes time. Yeah. Right. It, this was not just an injury or... A, so many people still think it had something to do with Frank or something. I mean, yeah. obviously this... This is deep and, and runs deep, and I understand her desire to constantly maybe set a goal for her to work towards, um, just like she did at the last Grand Prix that she had to withdraw from. You know, it's... I do it's, think that she'll show up to this one if she decides, if she can get in, you know, skating condition, get her triples back, and decide that she wants to compete. Whether or not she's ready to be competitive at Cup of Russia, I think she would show up because it would give her an automatic buy to nationals. And I think I, that that was discussed with the USFS. They're funding her in some respect. 
Um, but that's so, a big ask to yeah. get ready and get your triples. <laughs> I mean, one would think maybe that that well, skating people are ridiculous. I mean, there were comments when she showed up at some of the shows in Sun Valley when she was doing a single axle and couldn't really do doubles, and people were like, "Well, maybe she's just choosing not to do the doubles." And it's like. Now's the time to, and again, it's not like that we believe she couldn't. It's just yeah. at some point you have to be practical. And even I saw when they posted the uh, Grand Prix announcements, maybe on USFS on Instagram or something like that, like all these like Gracie Gold, like super fans were like discussing that you're using a picture of Brady. You need to be using a picture of Gracie and help that. her with the comeback. And I was like, you need she to She hasn't even announced a, who her coach is. We've known that it's Vincent Reston Court. She's been there for a while, but... Um, one, when no one talks about you, like one person, I was like, someone's like, oh, I saw Gracie the other day. And I was like, oh, what was she doing? Well, I saw her working on Lutz Edges. You know, I think she was working on the, on the takeoff. And it was like, if Gracie is learning how to take off for a Lutz, this is Gracie who did triple Lutz. Like the season. most gorgeous Lutz show like ever. Yeah. It was so big and gorgeous. It's yeah. going to take a while. I just think that, I don't think that she can't come back. I think that what I'm saying is that I think it's going to take longer than just a couple of months. I think that's exactly it. It's like, of course. It's she an 18 month, I would say like an 18 month journey. I wouldn't expect miracles right. this year. I wouldn't expect her to go to Worlds. I'm saying, I think if she's really committed and serious and wants to go about this and do it the right way, I think the next Olympics is certainly possible. I think it's just going to take time. And, and of course it does. It's a craft. If it was that easy to just do it, everyone would just like, Come back, no, yes. no problem. I mean, and you're setting her up. For and she's with Vincent, who hasn't even had like a, a rink for longer than eight months at the last year. Or so I mean, this is all trending. So steady is going to win the race if she really wants to win and it. I have and to say, like, th I want to say, like, I'm. I hope she's doing well. I, you know, from it sounds like she is from people who've seen her. I, it was just I literally her. I, there's something about her I like, and I like so her. I hope she's she snarky. It out. She's fun. We literally saw her, they announced that she was in Scottsdale, Arizona, that she was coaching there, and they put out a press release. We heard maybe two weeks later that she was in Pennsylvania. So they're just, it just seems like... Unorganized. Yeah. Yeah. It seems a little like, well, what is the plan? And maybe they have one and they're not telling us, but I have a, it seems a little scattered in its, in its um, I've just seen a lot of this in skating. You know, like... We're cooking right. one day, we're making aprons the next, you know, like it's just, you know, it's... You went there. <laughs> I did. But, you know, but it actually speaks to a very interesting thing, you know, so many of these skaters that maybe left unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. It was great to hear Megan talk about, she should have missed skating at the moment because she left so fulfilled and so complete on how she ended things. Yeah. And so many people are denied that opportunity. Daisuke may be included. Maybe yeah. that's not how we wanted to go out. I don't understand how, at this juncture, it could go out any other way. But for me, even when Mao was struggling, mm -hmm. I thought Mao's programs that final season were some of her finest, yeah. if not her finest. And so even though you knew she wasn't really a technical factor, I was so enjoying seeing those programs, seeing those spins timed perfectly with that ritual dance and all of these sorts of things. Daisuke would do that. For me, of like... From the time I have watched skating live, mm -hmm. he has, without a doubt, been my favorite male skater. And we love his skating. And, you know, his career was so um, changed because he had that knee injury in 2009. And it was never quite the same in terms of maybe, you know, it was always a struggle to be number one in the world. As opposed to before, he was absolute best in the world. You know, at that point in time, he didn't win those worlds, but he... Right. After that, you know, things started to happen, and then it was, you know, things had For changed. For me, in 2012, I was there live, and I was like, that is, it was totally the winner to of me. Of course, he was the of, winner. Like, of course. It was, and even, you know, even with an eye roll, Beatles selection that we had to endure. Can we just say, why does Lori Nichol do these career-ending Beatles programs with people? I mean, it's just <laughs> it's awful. Like, a, you know, like, goodbye. Notice he's not using Lori uh, this year. Uh, just saying. Who is he using? Did he announce that? Yes. So he's using David Wilson for the short, which David and I together excites me. And then he's using Benat Michaud from the lawn. Uh, and of course, Benat like, had a photographer there taking pictures in black and white. He was ready to self-promote on Instagram the second that that was announced. I, I, I got it. But, I mean, but again, I just so enjoyed um, Sochoko's work with Tom Dixon. Yeah. 
that I'm intrigued what someone like Daisuke could do with a Tom Dixon. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. And I pref- so I like Tom Dixon the best with like a man of like ambiguous sexual orientation where you mm. think that he might be very sensitive to music, perhaps had an overbearing mother, perhaps like <laughs> well, likes a lot of theater. They all had that. Yeah. Like <laughs> hair gel, musiciany, like uh-huh. Did he go to, like, did he pray it away? Like, that's my kind of Tom Dixon skater, like, that they're revealing their innermost being on the ice. So I think that... something you have to express. Yeah. 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 So I think... I think we should send Ice Skate to Tom Dixon. That would be a genius, genius choice. I think think it would be such... I'm ready for the Eight Seasons Tango, though, that um, Satoko will do with Tom Dixon. I'm ready for that. Okay. I'm I'm just ready to see her again. So, <laughs> Satoko with the tango, and notice that her show program was like Latin e. Like they're they're working that for her. Yeah, she's dipping her toe in that spicy water. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and we know she is Tom's favorite. So how could she not be? Come on. I was, you know, I I had to text Tom and confirm that he did choreograph Rika Kihira's program, and I was like, well, did you did you were you in charge of the packaging? Because I had to watch this program a couple of times. The actual skating is beautiful but we were in spotlights. There was angst arms at the end while there were... Storm arms. Stormy arms. Stormy arms (laughs) with stormy sound effects and gloves in a gray costume. It was very Mishin packaging. And I was like, did Tom have a brain aneurysm? Like, what was was happening? (laughs) You know, like what? But But you know, it's interesting. When I saw her do it, I was like, these moves, these choreographed moments have great potential. Yes. But it's the kind of thing where I wish she had the choreographer on staff in the rink. Yeah. Because she's doing them admirably. But I was like, if you work nonstop with someone to really hone those moves, they could come, well, in music we say off the page, but like it could be that like next level if she had someone constantly working the finesse of those things, because it's there, but I want it to continually be cultivated and improved upon. Especially with the Japanese ladies and with Yuna, I, you know, David made a <laughs> comment that was a little touchy, but she did do better when she worked with him daily. And, you know, there is a different style of skating in North America and even, you know, and when they're in the rink every day and they're seeing that and just seeing how someone else runs their program, it does kind of lend itself to hitting more of the notes and doing more of the Broadway, you know, hit the high note kind of thing Moment. that skating adopts. They provide yeah. more moments. Yeah. And so my question to you also... And Rika you know doesn't have that. Satoko has that just intrinsically. She gets it. She watches. She knows how to do it. Mao learned it when she came. Because before, remember, Mao was very adorable, but she had hideous costumes and like tacky programs but she was just inherently charming and wonderful knee bend and great you know right see now my question you know how we see now as we start to see all these new programs um okay the question is twofold like my chin (laughs) uh so um when we see a program and we're like this will grow Mm -hmm. this will the more she does it the more it will get better but my question with someone like rika is who i think is great Mm-hmm. Uh, is does this does the integrity of the choreography grow throughout the season? She um, needs to spend just, time in Colorado, I think, with Tom Dixon. She's not a natural artist. I don't think she ever will be. There yeah, is it's not just time, it's time with the choreographer yeah. that will yeah. Okay, that was the movement is beautiful. The actual steps and the transitions are really complex and interesting. And they go in different directions. There's multi-directional skating, and that's Wonderful. Right. I was a little concerned the triple axle was a little under-rotated, landed on the wrong foot. Uh, but that was a little... And then also we have to remember those spotlights are so much smaller. And they're smaller, And yeah. there are spotlights. And blah, blah, blah. You know, so... But she did have the kind of smaller jump technique. I'm just... I, I want to see her. I want to watch. I want to see this develop. You know, I, things were working against her here, but... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those tricky things because, you know, even Megan was talking about using the shows as practice vehicles, which I think is great. Uh, Sorry to make it all about me, but I always do. Mm -hmm. In singing, like, okay, if you put me on a costume, on a grand stage, big orchestra, 4,000 seats, let's go. Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm at, like, a restaurant in some, like, 
idiot is like, you sing, will you sing for me right now, unaccompanied at the restaurant? You're like, no, that's not what I do. Like, that's, no, I'm not going to do that. And that's almost how I feel sometimes about these shows. Would you sing at my birthday party if I asked you to? For you, Dave, I would. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like, they're on the small ice. They're in the thing. So it's like, is it effective to practice and have to modify and make so many adjustments and potentially think now you have an axle issue when maybe you don't in a regular scenario when you have the full space to work with? I don't know when it's helpful to do it or when you're kind of getting a little scrappy with it because you have to adjust to space and lights. Yeah. She did have a problem on another jump, I think, in there. Some of these are blending together. I did that yeah. I felt weren't weren't solely technical but she's more also really working the arms still like there was a lot of adopting of russian just jump technique and but now with the new with the new changes about how to get a bullet, the picture but there's still so i was hoping she would leave that because when she was at the junior grand prix final it, i think it was a short program that had me nervous because it looked like russia 2.0 she looks like she's really watched some russia either in... well that's what's winning she'd be silly not to look at russia and try to do that but um, I hope, yeah, I hope they swing the pendulum. But did you Especially see my daughter from Russia there? Yeah. Okay, Dave, let's talk it out. Miss Sherbakova. Anna Sherbakova, who is there making money because remember, she only got, she didn't compete on the Junior Grand Prix last Not year. By there you mean Dreams on Ice? Dreams on Ice, yes. Dreams on Ice, okay. These ridiculous titles from week to week that are so different. Hope Fair in future, time. like... Sorry. I thank you, Canada. Dream of this. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Anna Sherbakova was mm -hmm. there and debuting her new uh, free skate to Rano Capriccioso. Uh, I, and it's interesting. So she didn't get the high level Russian funding. So she needs these shows so that a Terry gets her cut, you know, gets her. But she didn't get the funding because she was like. Injured. She had correct? a broken leg from doing quads, you know. Yeah, it's being, not like she let them down. <laughs> when you do quads on the amount of food that they eat, um, if you've watched any of the Russian rhythmic documentaries lately, uh, <laughs> I think we have a, a look into... Um, oh, by the way, Jonathan, I sent you the one rhythmic documentary on... Um, that's the one that's... Still to watch it. So that's the one that's done by other people. There's also one put out on RT by Russians themselves that I watched. If you go down that rabbit hole, name of my yeah. new podcast I'm developing. Anyway, uh, where they show the training of the Russians. And this is like Russian state propaganda. You know, you know YouTube now lets you know that it's um, you know state funded. And right. they're talking about how when Kabayeva first went to Russia... She had to lose like 1.5 kilos in three days or something. So she just drank water around the clock. And this is like what they're telling you, like propaganda wise is like. Yeah, that's possible. the positive spin on the yeah. story. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we can only imagine, you know. Right. Now, the interesting thing about, oh, obviously it's an epic piece of music, mm -hmm. right? And where the music climaxes. It's like building, and then it goes right into that. That's when she took her smoke break. Yes. With at the climax, that that's you talk about like the cheesy like aha Broadway moment that we like so much in North America. That's where it was supposed to have happened, mm -hmm. and she was just kind of walking around. Yeah. And I was like, wait, whoa, whoa! You, I understand you need a smoke break, but like not here anywhere. So this is but when the Russians come up with the steps when the music isn't even playing. Like, you know how they're not having the music dictate them. They kind of sometimes put the skating over the music. Exactly. That's a, what does the music ask for? Yeah. And the music was asking for a big moment there. And she's, she literally just stood there and that's not on her. Cause I think not like my favorite Costa Naya, but she has an emotive. So I wrote down that there's a little bit of Yulia in her. There's a little bit of Sasha. There's a little bit of Medvedeva where she has this, this, um, in, intrinsic musicality you know like there's a little there's a it quality there's a star quality there i think coaster naya maybe is more artistic um uh -huh. in, a, in a traditional sense this one she has a little more spark a little more there's something with her head and the way she holds it and the art you know she hears the music you know projection there's also projection and the arms are just um not uh cluttered yeah 
she's able to declutter that choreography. And she knows how to hold a landing of a jump, like she's in the ballet. Like she really get understands how to Can we talk about the jumps. So for a second, yeah, they're like, small. Her, well, her triple triple. Yeah. When she takes off for the second triple, Dave, it looked like she was bending over to tie her skates. Yeah. She so this, and this is something I've noticed that happens sometimes. In, in that Atiri triple the rink, because they never correct the technique because they just find the next girl. You know? Yeah, they want him to eke it out. Like, to me, if you're hunched like that and you're bending literally at the waist in half and you're, you have to be using all of the incorrect muscles to artificially achieve what it is you're seeking she to do. Could, that could be fixed so easily. In other words, she has the talent to do it. But it's, again, right. it's a Sateri thing. We saw it with Paulina Shelepen. We've seen it with Yulia. We saw it with Medvedeva. We've seen it with Zgidova. We've seen it, you know, they literally just, they don't correct. Anything that a Terry could be doing wrong, they don't address. They will find the next girl and blame the previous girl. And as soon as they go through puberty, it's like these problems become, you know, as Bethany well, Frankel I, says, cracks become craters, Jonathan. It's, it's true. And, and at some point when, when we know of skaters that go to other places and they're like, we have to wipe the slate clean. We are doing basics. We are really readjusting everything, even though it seems like a step backwards. I mean, they seem to be like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But the problem is it will break. Yes. I think. Not having done triple triples, I can't tell you. Yeah, but that will break. And you're not supposed to like throw your entire body forward to do the second Because you're, you're compensating. If you're not using the proper muscles, you're going to use something else to, to, make, to make that happen. We could then, send her to Alex Arashev, put her on, you know, increase her caloric intake by 400 calories and put, you know, put her on, uh, you know. I'm like, holy cow. But also because then the... the the program I watched right after was Mimi Hara's, mm -hmm. the magic program or whatever it was. That's oh, magic. We'll it's so magic. That. And there was a typo and it said masic. And I was like, yes. what is she getting to? Masochism? Or I, what's she doing? But then her technique on the triple triple, she does that nice lean, but it's, it's, her back is totally straight. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it has, it's just such a more aesthetically pleasing combination then, mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. So that, that, that's the only thing that kind of made me worried mm -hmm. for her. Yeah. So, but I think that Sherbakova, I think she'll do very well in the Grand Prix. I think this program will develop over time, or at least her interpretation of it will. Um, she looks I ready. I that's that moment. And again, knowing that it's so early, knowing that the rink is small, knowing that she's in spotlight, maybe they have something else. But I think you have to look at look at the information that we've been getting. So for years, Medvedev was using Averbuk, and there was have. That's why she was deaf and then hearing and then that's why she was with 9-11 which she herself said that she hated that program recently i know even though i what i will tell you like where candy man with um Tarasova and morozov you knew they hated candy man and were told to do it because you could see them hate it um Evgenia really tried yeah like one would hope that she was a little like this doesn't feel quite right but she sold it anyway because she's yeah. like such a killer student yeah now danny g who seems very nice and attractive. Unfortunately, we now have to judge him. And yeah, when you been... have Zagidova, who's the Olympic champion, and you can give her any new pieces of music, you have, and you pick the two most offensively overused pieces of music right. in skating, Phantom right. of the Opera and Carmen. It's like, bye, girl. You are yeah. trash. Right. That you, that is just... I mean, he gave a more interesting piece of music to Sherbakova than to right. Zgitova, like less of an eye roll. That right. is what you want to give. That just tells you everything you need to know about how much Terry really cares about the program, fixing the details, developing the skaters. I mean, it's a factory line of production. More so, Dave, like, not to be like all hipster about it, but do you care about the, the sport as an art form? I how do. <laughs> Uh, no, Atari I mean, doesn't. No, know. I know we yeah. do. But like, um, this maybe kind when of... she starts losing, if they, you know, with the plus five, I'm wondering with Medvedeva, if they, if Tracy really works on Evgenia's skating skills and makes her as powerful as Hanyu is now, because they both have come to them with a lot of ability and a lot of positives. Oh. Of course, of course, and you, yeah. And we'll get to Hanyu, and you look at, you know, how, what she could really do with Evgenia's skating skills and how much stronger she can make them in the in-betweens. 
it, but, I think Zagitova could start losing. And if they start losing, that's the only way they would have a... After they bitch and complain that it's a bunch of politics, that's the only way that they will then be forced to... Um, but see, they've all, all of their camps seem so, and understandably so, I understand they're in a system that puts a lot of pressure on the coaches and the camps and all these things because they, they quantify the value of the, I view it as an art, it is a sport, but it is an artistic sport, that they, they assess it based solely on the results. Mm-hmm. To me, Michelle Kwan's birthday was yesterday. She doesn't have that Olympic gold medal. No one cares. Her historical performances, we are still talking about them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, to me, where is the more noble effort? You're not putting forth a noble effort to advance the art form and express something exquisite that changes the sport forever if you're offering Carmen and Fanta. You have a talent that can actually be remembered. Give her a historical performance that we talk about 60 years from now. Yeah. Not just, and, and I feel this way, and I'm really sorry to say it, but this was another skater we watched here about Nathan. And and I love Nathan, and Nathan is amazing in his physical power. Seeing prowess, but him in a show side by side with Hanyu. Okay, go. Well, I, uh, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. Um, sometimes I feel the same about Hanyu, mm-hmm. and I'm really sorry to say that. For me, my historical Hanyu performance is the um, the first iteration of the program he did when he won the Grand Prix final. Mm-hmm. Like with that final step at the end, like that was something I would go back and YouTube for years to come. And that's something when my non-skater friends are like, show me some skating. I remember showing people Nathan even win the big thing where he landed all the quads and it doesn't, it's a huge achievement, but it's not um, an artistic moment. It's not. Nathan has this whole rebellious, I'm going to run around the rink, have my sloppy hair be hunched over, do my quads. I mean, he's learning showmanship, but I really, and I, I understand what you're saying about Hanyu at times. I thought that because Hanyu is not doing all of the jumps to protect his, you know, to, you know, he's recovering from an injury. He's allowed, he's, what I like is that he's developing other areas of his skating while he's healing and getting back into top shape. Um, the interesting thing here is that he didn't do all of the jumps and the performances that we saw and I thought that he had so much more of a command and nuance what he did with the arms, with the head, feeling the music, even the hydro blade moment here, I thought was like a point to a point and a half better than Nathan in components, oh, if I had to judge them. A hundred percent. You definitely see the difference between the two. But to me, almost Hanyu is so in a class of his own, especially with the people that have retired and all this kind of stuff. I think he's so far ahead of Nathan that he doesn't need all of these quads under the new... Point. Especially I, plus five system, yeah. yeah. But my thing is now you have to now you're competing against yourself. Mm-hmm. So I guess I'm more on like an artsy kick this week, yeah. although I'm always on an artsy kick. But um, when you the kind of music he was skating to here mm-hmm. was kind of um, someone will be like, you don't even know what you're talking about. It's famous, and it doesn't matter that it's famous. The music drones on. It reminded me of like. And was a live piano player doing it with him there? Was that? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and it was, it seemed um, improvised, but not in a positive, spontaneous way. And it, it lacked. In like a dis and show way? Say it one more time. In a dis and show way where they're just kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It was just kind of going and, well, you know. Well, generic loveliness that they put under the skating sometimes. That stays the same level. That's why they play it in massages. So you can just zone out to it. But I want arcs. I want a powerful moment. I want a sensitive moment. And sometimes when you pick music that just kind of goes along like this, I'm left feeling that generic lovely feeling. The Hydroblade could have gone at any point in that music. But the Hydroblade itself was wonderful. And he it did express the music which was subpar. The music was not as good as he is, is what I would say. It's the same yeah. way when you watch Lambiel skate to that Emile Sandy song, like tell it was me- It better interpretation than the song deserves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I thought that what he was doing and the skating skills were so strong that Hanyu was doing, yeah. you could really see how much Tracy's influence on him. Also, so point yeah. for Hanyu, Bo Yang Jin isn't there. Something happened where Orser's team is now saying that he's not coming. But they also said Jason wasn't coming before. This could be a ploy 
if he is coming, to get complete control because you know that Bo Yang Jin is artistically oh, special needs, right? Like yeah. Bo Yang, are special needs, right. So but they're going to... trying. He's getting a little better. The goal, he's, he's not they one of They put lipstick but, on a pig when they did that last Spider-Man but he's program. rejecting the idea of trying where we know other skaters who reject, like kind of Max Aaron was like, I'm yeah. not even trying. But you yeah. know here, so something happened that he, like, Lori kept him for choreography. And you know, these are two big egos now. Like, there's Lori who has all of her champions, and there's Brian. And you know that the thing is, is that if Brian is working with, and Lori loves to be in the kiss and cry. Um, but you know, and I think Lori is very talented and wonderful, but if Brian is going to be the coach, and Brian has his choreographer who can be in the rink who's David Wilson, and work with him and develop it, that's weird for David to be working on Lori's work when they're both... I'm sure he wouldn't. I'm sure yeah. he wouldn't to make those adjustments. Yeah. And then how can he work on her art? And then how is Brian supposed to develop Bo Yang Jin and do the necessary improvements? So I think that there could be a sort of... Because all we know is that Lori kept him long, and, and the Chinese still think that Bo Yang is going. But as of now, they're saying no. So this could be a thing where all of a sudden you see David doing the programs you know, for him. This could be... So if he wants to go... And why would you go to... If you know that you want to go to Orser, or you're going for Orser's expertise, for him to use his choreographers, for him to use the his package, team with the you. Yeah. The it's like if you go to Frank, you know you're getting a Lori program. You just right. know that that's what's going to happen, you know? Now, do you think that, like, is it that Brian might think that Laurie is, like, overrated? Or do you think she's no. her time come and gone? Or he no, just... I just think it's a, you want to work with your, I don't know, I actually don't know what happened, but I, in my mind, trying to think of what could be, you would think that, like, Brian would want to be able to work with his team all the time and be able to really dig in there and work, right. you know? right. So, it was. what do you think of Medvedeva? So, they, we have not seen the Medvedeva David Wilson programs yet. This, the it was so vital to me seeing her in these ridiculous <laughs> exhibitions. That's a good observation. With, That's the, a good observation. with the ball going back and forth. She was real rhythmic gymnastics, but the arms were beautiful. Arms were. And I just get nervous she's going to skate right over that ball at some yeah. point. I was like, you put it there for like this one weird a moment. A ball for no reason. And then I know, why do Russians love color of the night so much? Can you explain why all Russian divas must skate to it? Bayul did it. Pasha did it. They love that. But this was windmills of your mind. But then there was a reference in the lyrics to Color of the Night. I, I'm not sure. I'm not. Somehow, you think. Okay. They, they love that piece. Of, it is so. Um, but she was, I'll tell you what. She was holding a couple more positions. She, she, held, she held some landings, Dave. She did. I a, said that her triple sow cow was a plus five underneath the new. Real. A edge coming out of yeah. it and she let it happen she didn't jump or, or you know do it some sort of like stag leap the triple or loop something. looked like at least a plus three or plus four it looked quite you know quite good of course they'll give her a plus five because she's going to be about but right i at this point she's with she's with brian and we're going to make some changes right i effing hate when she does the upright spin and she has the leg dangling and it looks like she's doing being a music box dancer and then the foot with the ugly skates are and the Adea skates are hideous. Brian, I don't I don't Get <laughs> I will find you like such a man if you will just like not let that happen. Let that happen. <laughs> Can you change the costumes and the music and the I don't care who we have to find. You know, like we will be indebted to you forever. Do you like cars? Do you like, like, how do we fix this with her? This well, is yeah, we will find a way. The thing is, a lot of these, you have often talked about, like, the growth someone can make when they go out of their comfort zone, like, literally in location. Mm -hmm. Jason, going to Toronto. Yevgenia, going to Toronto. More than that they're going to Toronto, they're just going somewhere else also. It's, um, it's an ownership. It's... Um, you're you're they're the CEO of their own skating board mm -hmm. and I just feel like I am so encouraged by Yevgenia each time like I was like it's gonna it's gonna be I'm on board that I think it's gonna be so good as it develops yeah I think making the right adjustments she knows the adjustments she wants to make and even in the confines of a rhythmic ball prop and laying on the ice 
already I'm like, I see you. Her enhanced. artistic flair is coming out. I mean, that was a diva ending to the program. The music That's is in terrible. That's a genuine way, not in an I was told to be angsty, yeah. even though, you know, I may not feel that way. It, now, it seemed authentic. Yeah, I like How it. do you feel about Karen Chen with Alex Arashev, which we've confirmed is is happening? I think if anyone's going to whip her into shape and get all of those jumps in order, that's your man. I mean, I, I, I just, want a documentary feature on this. I mean, think about it. You have Karen, like, he could give her a nervous breakdown if he... I, I told him, I said that I watched, a, I said, Alex, I watched a documentary on Russians. And I said, you know, Arena Wiener makes you look like a teddy bear. And he goes, yes, Arena's system, it doesn't work in the U.S. You know, I was like, Alex, I think you could do it, though. <laughs> you know. But I think, you know, did you ever find this when you're in a relationship and you kind of grow, mm -hmm. but yet you can't always apply that personal growth to the relationship you're in. Because it changes I, the dynamic. I, yeah, then when you, like, let's say, end that relationship and you start a new relationship, you, like, leap forward in your thing. And I don't know what the situation was with Tammy, but I'm sure patterns had developed that are hard to break, even if she was ready to, just given the routineness of it. So her with Alex shaking things up, that ridiculous off-ice training thing he does that seems so beneficial for so many jumps, being around Shoma, being around these, these hard workers, I hope it kind of, it's this or it's not happening. And Shoma will be going there. He just was working with, uh, he was just, I don't know if he was getting choreography from um, Romain Hagenauer or was he just working with him on skating skills? I'm not sure, but he was. Yeah, a picture of them all together. Yeah. And his coach was there too, which I thought was interesting and, uh, you know, promising. So. Yeah. I thought that was there. Um Speaking of, um, so we do have to talk about Mai Mihara. Okay. She looks a little older. She does. In a, wait, like you know, I have her like, in pink. Last year she was in a different color. This year she's in pink. Two years ago it was sea green. All right. So you can, I wait, think. Wait, was the magic program in pink or was it red? I don't know. It was pinkish red. It was some sort of. It makes a difference in this like um, girlish vibe. The music was still a little girlish to me. So, but, but you okay. could tell like, again, Someone who needs to be with a choreographer every day is Mai. Like Brady, she needs it constantly because she herself doesn't have a clue of what to do. So you could tell that this was a thing where they were like, what to do with Mai Mihara? You know, she's not a skater where you are like listening to music and you're like, that's, she's, in, she's not inspiring, okay? It needs Mai to interpret this. Yeah, no, I got in a fight with Michael Shanley of this because I you know, said... Well, I got in a fight with him over this piece of music because I said that this was Doris Day, you know, is singing this. And I said it's like one of those random Turner Classic movies that is put on when you need just a nice nap on Sunday afternoon. Right. And he was like, right. Doris Day was like Madonna in her day. You don't even understand. And I was like, you weren't But at then. the end of the day, it's not about, at the end of the day, <laughs> it's not about Doris Day per se. It's about as it applies to my... Right, and mine needed some sort of like X factor, something to kind of help she it along. Zero I'll X factor, zero. Those jumps, I really do enjoy her jumps. No, like everything she, is good. She's a good skater. She's a good um, fine qualities, really fine qualities to her just edges. Like giving you seventy five percent or seventy percent at all times. Like she's just that nice girl in a math class, <laughs> in an English yeah. class. She's just, but she's there's nothing memorable. There's nothing. Special. Whereas Sherbakova has that je ne sais quoi. Right. Mamihara does not. Right. So in. She's very Brady Tonellish, very Rachel Flattish, very like. <laughs> She's better than that. But I think that like what I would love is like some like um, French conservatoire music. Then match it with like just like. With take acting them. classes and dance classes and hip hop classes and music lessons and just. See, she could see fine films, French film, independent films. I mean, we just have to bring out what is inside of there because it's, it's just, and it's, there's so much competition within Japan that she's just, it's just going to be smothering. Oh, and, and I mean, for the most part, I know she had an up and down season last year, but 
that general consistency proves her well. Like if she could just kind of bring a little bit of pizzazz, we'd be right there. But that's why I don't know their reluctance to just go like warhorse classical, give her some like French dreamy music that's very elevated and will help enhance, you know, Maria Sotskova, we understand that she struggles with kind of this lack of pizzazz also, but usually her approach is then to just go warhorse ballet music, mm -hmm. classical music all across the board. And it's intriguing that they won't do that with mine. Mm -hmm. Instead, they're doing these like cutesy ballads and things like that, which to me further shows me and that that's not the case. It would be like Maria Sotskova doing Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend or something. Like, I don't... I, I would I enjoy that, the I, Russian tackiness of it. You know there would be pantomiming and, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> shimmy, shimmy. It's okay. the kind of apron that you get engaged in. You know, it would just be, like, <laughs> wonderful. Um, and speaking of comebacks, Anna Pogorila doing... Um, coming Whatever. back... The Frida, the Frida she was doing, yeah. You know she's coming back, right? No. Oh. You're joking. No, 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 she is. And she's already doing shows, yes. Well, I saw the shows. I mean, I just... No, she's, she's back. Okay, like, let me tell you. Bette Midler is back where she belongs on Broadway. And hello, Dolly, yes. I'm telling you, Anna is back. There, yes. I, I talked about these comebacks. She's back, too. Huh. huh. They're also faking a Lori Hernandez comeback in gymnastics, which like the same team that gave you the Sean Johnson fake comeback. So it's just, it's been a lot to handle. I uh, just wonder what the motivation is behind all of that, but. What um, else do they have to do? Okay. I know. T especially. Tanisha is also still competing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I just, huh, that, like, there was like finally like a release of seeing on a skate and to be like, well, at least she's not competing. But she did do a nice triple loop that I was like, you could have borrowed that triple loop several times in your career. I don't but, think the injury was the problem. I'm just still saying that was... Oh, you know, I, I think it certainly caused or like was a contributing factor. But I think whatever um, mental issue may have even led to some of the falls, may have led to the injury, may have led to some of it. It's all a kind of cyclical thing with her. Well, I hope she finds whatever it is she's looking for, Dave. <laughs> And to come to our grand conclusion of the episode, <laughs> Sakamoto Kaori. Okay. Kaori. I, the name, I'm just not great at it. And let's... People will be real upset and 10 people will yell at you. Jonathan tell, Rossman every week. You pronounce it 10 different ways. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. that's what's so conflicting about Skating to the piano. And I was like, which skater did this? I think Wesley Campbell used it at a, a Nationals, but I'm like, did other people use this? Okay. But this, this music runs into the same thing where I feel like I'm listening to spa music designed. It is designed to zone you out. Certain soundtracks are designed to merely be a background to what you're seeing, you know, in a, in a movie. It's not designed. This is a clear Binot program, right? This looked like it. Yeah, I thought so. Um, I mean, the triple flip, triple toe was nice. Um, I uh, mean, the double axle, um, you know. Yeah, I thought the jumps looked good. Some people are just a mess, right? And some skaters are just going to inherently make bad choices and pick people. And Now, all the messes out there, you think she's one of them? I think because the Japanese women are so exceptional. She's always going to be this to me. And she yeah. delivers in this where we have the seagulls coming in and the bird changes and the... She, like, kisses the sea? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Jonathan, what the fuck is happening? I know. And in some, especially in the opening, this was another thing, like, I was kind of thinking about Rika. Like, there were, there were good seeds to these ideas. We Even can't just blame the choreographer because she's choosing to use him again. You know, know. like, she's choosing... Like, this is her, too, now. This is well, her vision. From her camp standpoint, she had a huge breakout. And it's like, to me, you had a breakout in spite of your Amelie program. Mm -hmm. But maybe the camp thinks she had the breakout because of the Amelie program. Like, I thought the short program was so much better last year for her. So I wish she had kind of gone more that route again this year. Well, at least um, she'd be memorable in a bad way. You know, you have, like, you have my who's not memorable, period. You know, so you have... 
Does, do the Japanese, uh, does the Japanese Federation have their equipment? I'm sure they must of champs camp or, or what do they, they call it? They have some sort of camp. They did an Olympic camp last year, I'm sure. But um, like, I'm just, if they start to like nip things in the bud and be like, switch this part of your program. I don't program. think they've really needed that in the past. And it, it looks like they may, this was just. The U.S. desperately needs it. And that often gets like counterintuitive like advice, but um I, I wonder. You ever notice that in all of his programs, he loves the girl to be like standing on one leg on an edge and like leaning over, and we're like, it's like looks like an A frame. Oh my yeah, God. it's it's unusual. But you know, even again, there were some um, great jumps. Course, great jumps, but and there were some choreographic ideas and isolated movements that I was like, there's something to it. Should it be enhanced? In the same way, I thought actually go with me uh, in Brady's Cinderella program in the clockwork sequence. She did the footwork sequence. So he had and an to idea. me, the concept mm. was right. And it just never, it was, for some reason, it never came off the page. It never worked. But the, I got the idea was cool. It, right. But so, there was a disconnect so, somewhere. So my high school, uh, so my uh, English teacher for freshman year, he wrote a play and he was also the dra the fall drama uh, director. And he is also a musician. Big fucking body. By the way. I mean, <laughs> obvious, right? Okay. And he named his kids after... He named his dogs Martini and Rossi. I'm just... I mean, we like some substances here. Um, okay. He wrote, he wrote a play. And, like, sometimes you have ideas, but, like, not every idea needs to be fully realized, right? So he wrote a play... <laughs> that they performed in, in the school that each number on the clock had a different personality and that, and, and each. Okay. Per, it's and, a neat concept. I get That's a unique concept to think this about. This is like late seventies, early eighties, something yeah. sort of, you know, late at night, smoked too much ganja where right. you know three didn't want to be three anymore. Three wanted to be where five was and five wanted to be four and two wanted to be one. And, and, uh, the hour hand wanted to be the minute hand. I mean, and it was a 45 minute play about this. Okay. Okay. Trippy, terrible shit. Okay. Like just not every, not every teacher is meant to be an artist, you know, that a playwright, this is right. But like, I feel the same, the same way like, about Binod's choreography so far. What we have seen... But when you mention, like, the, for instance, the idea that of, the like... the clock had different personalities. Different personalities, and how do they... There's something there. It just wasn't this. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Sorry, Mr. Bernard. I'm sorry. It just wasn't your best work. I think you're a wonderful guitarist, but this was just not... So if that teacher is tuning into the skating lesson at about the 45-minute mark, <laughs> he's going to get super busy. <laughs> it was real life. It really happened, though. So, okay. also, so Rika Kihira's program, when I looked it up, it's called Mercy and Darkness, but they're calling it like a beautiful storm, but it's from the... Um, it's, I have a note that it's from a piece of work called Two Steps from Hell. And I'm like, things not to pick your skating music from. You know, just this is... Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, like the winner takes it all. I mean, it's just as... It's just it's like that. System. And you know, the faux thing, it's like, need emotion in a program? Just shake your hands like this. That's like... And the, the storm. Why is the storm everywhere now? It's infect is it infecting music or just skating that we have these sound effects? I was going to talk to you also about, um, on the, I'm in Vancouver now, so it's so much longer of a flight than you ever remember. Mm. And I watched The Greatest Show on Earth. Is that what it was called? The Barnum one? I haven't watched that yet. I've heard that song and it got in my head for a week. The This Is There's Me. I'm really afraid that Alexa and Chris or someone of that sophistication yeah. will skate to it. Yeah. It seemed like a very Colorado Springs kind yeah. of sound. Right for the pit. It's the new Moulin Rouge for sure. Now the movie was absolute garbage. I thought it was shit on a stick. You know, absolutely. Some of some of the pieces have merit in a popular, catchy sort of way. I could see it. Um, this is the moment we've been waiting for. I don't know whatever it was. Um, this that is opened. the moment. <laughs> yeah, damn all the odds. Hey. Um, Maybe that's what Gracie can say too. Um, but I was like, I could see why some of this would work, but I feel this, 
But of course, with skating, it'll be in 20 years that everyone starts skating to it endlessly instead of when it's relevant. But um, but I didn't find the movie relevant, but there were catchy tunes. I just wonder how many Colorado people are now going to come out with it. Oh, I, f I think it started. I believe that The Greatest Showman has started. It's begun. Uh, so, Yeah, I anticipate a real wave of that. That will be this like B-level North American storm <laughs> will be all of that. Not my cinematic choice, okay? I'm just... Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 I... <laughs> All right. Well, Jonathan... On that note. On that note. <laughs> hold an edge. Looks... And look sexy like Daisuke's edges, please. Oh, my God. I'm so excited to see him. He's the best. Bye, okay. <laughs>